What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to start rebuilding our home view here. So by the end of the video, we will have this one card set up. You can see our total home view app is going to be planned to look like this. You can actually go ahead and download this app right now. If you go to traveltreasury.app, you'll get the link for either Android or iOS. So a couple highlights of this video are we're going to be pulling this number right here from Firebase. You can see if we add more spent here, that number is going to be updated in real time. So that looks good. And we're also going to go over how to do this gradient in the background. All right, so essentially we're going to just be rebuilding this and everything we currently have is going to essentially be removed. We're not going to reuse any of this stuff up here. And we're also not gonna have this card list view. In fact, we're only going to allow a person to have one trip in this first version. So that is kind of changed from how we were building it initially. I talk about this all more in a other video, which I'll link below. Uh, essentially this detail view is going to become the home view and we're no longer gonna have this higher level home view. Let's go ahead and open up our home view. A few things to note. In one of our last refactoring videos, we pulled a lot of this future data that that actually gets the next trip. And we pulled that and moved it into the navigation view. So our navigation view now is going to get that next trip that the user has. So it's going to essentially get this trip that fills out all this data here. And you can see where we're passing that to the deposit view, but let's also go ahead and pass that trip to the home view. To require the trip in the home view, we just need to define it so that it will be a final and it will be of type trip, call it the trip. And then we're going to add it to the constructor here. It is It will be very much the same as the deposit view. So you can see, essentially we just need this right here. So now we have access to this trip and then within here, you'll see we were getting this next trip and we no longer need that. Uh, really, let's just go ahead and get rid of everything that's in here. Because we're just going to kind of start from the beginning here. So remove all these widgets that we built. And now we're left with kind of a very basic, basic home view, which just has uh, a trip when it's created and then we don't need this either, not right now at least. And then we just have our we just have our builds with it, which is building a container. So if you save that, basically if you rerun it, the ad will go away. And then yeah, that's our this is our new home view, which is just empty right now. So we can start to build out that top card. Sometimes it's easier to kind of just start over when you're making this big of a design change. Uh, I don't think what we had in the earlier version was really even that, it wasn't really that built out, so it wasn't, it's not that hard to delete it, but, but yeah, sometimes it might be hard to part with your code if you've spent a lot of time on it, but that is just part of the process of making things better. Uh, we can delete all of these imports that we no longer need, and good now now our home view is very much cleaned up and ready to be built the very first thing we want to do is use a single child scroll view here because we are going to want this to be scrollable so let's make that our highest level let's make that our highest level that's returned and then this will have a child and then we're going to give it a column and now within this column we're just going to have multiple different things that we're going to build. So you can see in our example here of what we're, of what our end goal is, we just have one column and we're going to build all of these kind of as individual widgets. So you'll see this top thing is going to be one widget of its own and then the column will just continue with other widgets. And we could build them right within here and just build out these widgets but it will get a little complex because you can see this layout is a little bit complex or a little bit more complex. So you can see how long that that column would get if we fill it with all of these things. A better approach is to actually extract out all of these individual pieces into widgets of their own and then just build this column with all of those widgets as children. Create a new folder and we'll put this in our, in our views. And I guess this will be a new directory. And then we're gonna call this the home widgets. 
and potentially we could reuse some of these, but it's more of an organizational thing right now. So then create a Dart file and we're going to call this the header or the home header. So now within this home header, we can build a widget. All right, so I set up this base code here. You're going to need to import material and the trip and then our home header is going to take the build context and the trip object. The reason we need the trip object is because this home header, which is going to be this top part here, is going to need to know what that trip's total value is. You could just pass it the value if you wanted, but I am going to be passing it the entire trip. So to build this, you can see it's actually very simple. We just need that value here, and then the rest is all hard-coded, just total saved. So let's go ahead and pull that value and set it to a variable called saved. And then, so since we have the trip, uh, it will just be trip.saved. And if we don't actually have a value, or if it comes back as null, then let's just set that to zero, uh, point zero, because the trip saved is going to be a double there. And then we can call floor on this, so regardless of if it's the trip or if it's our null value that gets converted to a zero, it will both be converted to just zero. Uh, now we need to return something from this widget, and we're going to return a container. Within this container, we want a full width and a certain height. So you can see the width of this is the full screen and the height is maybe 25% of the screen. So we're going to set the width and the height here using the media queries. And that's why we need that build context and then call size and width. Then for the height, it's going to be similar, but we're not going to do the whole height we're going to do the height and then we're going to multiply it by 0 0.25 so it'll be 25 percent of the total height uh go ahead and set a color here to be so just so we can see this so if you save that nothing happens and the reason for that is we're not actually calling the home header on the home view so as the first child element here call the home header and we're giving it that context and then we are giving it that trip. Now the trip here is going to need to be prefaced with widget because this is a state full widget. So, so up here when we're in the main home view, you know, trip is just trip, but down here in the actual state, we need to define, we need to call it with widget.trip. So no big deal there. Uh, if you save this, actually we want a comma, not a semicolon there. You'll see we now have that 25% block up here. The next thing we can do is display that number. So back in that home header, we're going to create a child of this container. And then we're going to wrap this in a safe area. The reason for this is we no longer have our tab bar up here. So if we don't use a safe area, the content could potentially go up in this area here. Wrapping it in a safe area will ensure that it is only going to be used down in this safe area here. Uh, so that is that is definitely important, especially if you're not using a tab bar. Then we're going to use a column within that. And we'll give the main axis alignment here of center. All right, so this is going to have two elements. The first element is going to be the actual saved amount. So that is going to be a dollar sign, which we're going to have to escape. And then we're going to pass in that variable, which is saved, this variable right here. And now we can add a little bit of style to this. We're going to want the text to be white and we're going to want the font size to be a bit larger. So we'll go with 65 there. The second element, which you can kind of copy this and paste it, and then we're going to modify it's not going to actually have a variable there. It's just going to say total saved. We're still gonna keep that white color and the font for this, the default font size should be good. If you save this, you'll see that looks pretty good. We're getting, we're getting that 75, which is coming from Firestore. If you look over here, our total saved on Firestore is 75. If we go into our calculator and add another 25 here and hit saved, you'll see it is updated 
as we would expect, so that all looks good. One thing I want to let you know though is if we had an extremely large value here for the number, which is probably not that likely, but for instance, instead of putting saved here, let's go ahead and put uh, just a bunch of nines. You'll see this happens, and we want to make sure that this never happens. This is, this is again, pretty unlikely that anyone will have this large of a number, but we definitely want to handle cases where this could happen. Um, to fix this, we can wrap this text widget in a fitted box. So wrap this in a widget, and it will be the fitted, fitted box. And then we can use the fit here and do a box fit of fit width. And what this will do is always make sure that this is on one line. In past videos, we used some other widget that did this, but actually a fitted box is the best way to do this now um, that I've found. If you wanted to add padding as well, that could prevent this from going up to the up to the exact edge there. And, and that looks good too. Um, but yeah, that is Definitely something you always want to keep in mind when you're dealing with values that are being pulled from Firestore because like this total saved we know is always going to be this length. So it's never going to, this is never going to change. It's always static. So that one we don't need to worry about, but this one we, we definitely need to be mindful of what could happen. Uh, but let's add that saved back here. And that looks good there. The final thing we're going to do is add this gradient here, which is actually pretty easy to do. And I think it looks quite good on, I think it looks quite good actually. Like when you use, especially when you use like the subtler gradient, like this one has a much subtler gradient than, than this one up here. And even this one has a pretty subtle gradient, but it kind of gives a little bit more depth and it, it makes it look less flat than this. Although the flat, the flat view does have its own kind of aesthetic that looks nice. But anyway, instead of defining the color here, we're going to define a decoration on this widget, and then it's going to be a box decoration. Then we'll call the gradient parameter on it, and there's a couple different types of gradients you can do. We're going to use the linear gradient here, and then then you pass in the colors as an array. So there's two colors that we're going to be using, the top color and the bottom color. And then, so it just passes in as the colors you want. Then we just need to tell the gradient where to begin and where to end. So we want it to begin with an alignment at the top center. And then we want it to end with an alignment at the bottom center. So as you can imagine, that's just gonna be a gradient going from the top to the bottom center. Uh, and you save that, there is our gradient. But yeah, that is it for this component. So you can see all this code right here as this home widget, which ends up being about 30 lines of code. We could have written that right within this column here, but I think you would agree that this is going to be a lot cleaner of a way to do this. Because imagine now you want to go and change something here. All you have to do is when you go in the code, it's so much easier to read. You go and you see, okay, we have the home header. Then you can go into the home header and you're like, okay, now I can change this element, this whole element, how I need to. Versus if we had all that code in this one column, it's going to be a lot of scrolling and figuring out exactly where it is. So in the next video, we'll continue building out this next widget. So like this video and subscribe to be notified when the next one is available. <laughs>